Good afternoon. Um, today I think that we are going to have a very big challenge because the challenge is not the presentation itself. It's because I'm going to do that in English, and English is not my first language. So this is why maybe sometimes we will some some accents going to Portuguese, but okay, uh, I'm sure that you understand me. Uh, I'm going to give you a background, a little bit background then to my country, and um, we will move to the meaning of the protection of social, cultural, and economical rights, and I will talk, uh, uh, talk a little bit with the mechanism for the protection of social, cultural, and economic rights. And also, finally, I provide you with some um, protection, social, economic in our country. Uh, regarding to Mozambique background, uh, moving to the population, the population is around 28 million. Uh, we, uh, as there are more women than men, and going to the rural population is around six, 66, and the urban is around 33.4. The population growth rate is um, 2.8, which is high. And also the gross birth rate is 37.9, which is also very high, one of the highest in the country, in the world. And the, 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 the GDP growth rate in 2017 was 3.7. And finally, the per capita GDP is around 406 US dollars. Going to protection of social, cultural, and economic rights. Social, cultural, and economic rights are these human rights which are more connected with best conditions for living, such as education, food, housing, job, health, and so on. In fact, they are tools are indispensable for human beings and they are necessary to guarantee that human beings live with dignity. The question is, how to protect them? How to protect the social, the, the social and economic rights? And who is responsible to provide them? There's no simple answer, and there's no consensus, consensus in this regard. It seems that Yes, to answer the second question, who is responsible to provide them than the first one? How to protect? Effect, 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 there is no doubt that the state has the primary responsibility for providing the minimal condition for those who I need. It means that the state must assure that all the citizens have had access to education, access to health, access to housing, food, and other related conditions. The problem, the problem is how to protect these rights if the state does not provide. Can a citizen open a case? Uh, can a citizen open a court, court case against the state? complaining that its social, cultural, and economic rights are not respected? Can, for example, the court condemn the state to provide health assistance for a citizen who are in need? These are some of the questions raised when we talk about inclusive social development. As I say, the answer for these questions depends on the situation of each country. 
As you should be aware, in some countries, a citizen is allowed to go to the court and complain about his social, cultural, and economic rights, meaning that it's possible to condemn, it's meaning that it's possible to condemn the state to provide rights to the citizens. It normal it normal happens where the rule of law has been reinforced and consolidated. In other countries, we can hold the state responsible, taking the, into account the national budget. If the state says, for example, the economic situation does not allow him to provide such support, it means that the rights will not be satisfied. In some case, the national budget functions as a limit where in some occasion it's not it's not be reasonable because there are best needs to be attended by the state to maintain the minimum dignity of the citizens. In fact, human dignity is something which is essential for all women beings and there will not be inclusive social development if there are hungry people and without access to education and health. Going to our own country, in Mozambique, the state has the primary responsibility to promote human rights and simultaneously guarantee its effectiveness. In fact, in the constitutions of Mozambique, in Act 11, it's established that it's the responsibility for the state to building of a social just society and creation of material, spiritual welfare and quality of life for the citizens. And also it's the responsibility for the state Defense and to, to defend and promote, promote human rights and equality of citizens before the law. To step strengthening of democracy, freedom, social stability, and social individual harmony. Although the Constitution provides provisions. We are far too much the social, cultural, and economic rights. In fact, today, we do not provide schools for all children, specific those in rural areas. The same, the same situation is applied when we are talking about health, because many people do not have access to health services. Again, in some situations, like when it coming to job creation for young people, many people are victims of poverty and hungry, including including children and old people. In conclusion, I think there are many challenges to effectively achieving inclusive social development. Much has, to be, much has to be done to ensure inclusive social, cultural, and economic rights. Partnerships are needed to provide sufficient, sufficient support to transform our world. It should be the prime, it should be the primary responsibility for each state to take all necessary measures to meet the best needs. There is no country in the world that can effectively tap inclusive social development alone. We have to act collectively so that no one can be left behind. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.